Okay, um, welcome back to the second step in citric acid synthesis. Here we have a large uh, Erlmeyer flask. It doesn't matter what size you use, but because I have about uh, 120, 130 milliliters, and to have a little bit of room, I'm using a larger Erlmeyer flask. I'm using a 500 milliliter flask. I got a funnel and I got a Wattman filter paper inside of it. And you see this little technique of, um, I just took some paper, folded it, and made it into an L shape and just stick it in. Now this is something I learned from my high school teacher way back and he's, and uh, you can figure out why we do it, but I'm going to do it. You can figure out the reason is what I meant and uh, it's pretty simple. So all we're going to do is, if you feel like your filtration is taking too long, switch over the paper and start with a new paper. Just simple. All right, so there we go. There's our citric acid. Um, the citric acid is in the layer that's collected in the flask, and then we use that into our step three of this citric acid synthesis process. So I'm going to cut off the video here because I don't want you to be um, staring at filtration process. It's not all that exciting. But in the future, I'll see if I can get some time lapse shots, and it'll be cool. But for citric acid synthesis, we don't require that much coolness, so I'm going to cut off the video here and I'll uh, see you back when I'm ready with step three. Okay, I'm back now. Um, I got all of the uh, liquids filtered. It took a little bit of time, but it was worth it. I have a clean liquid here in the jar. and uh, So this, was, this is the second step in the process. And what we're now going to do is, we made sodium citrate in the previous step, which is the first step where we added sodium hydroxide to make citric acid, which is acidic, into a basic solution. Now, we're going to add some calcium chloride. Um, you can add, I, may, I will be providing the stock solution to all my students so that they can go ahead and add the entire batch of it in here. Here I have about 28 grams of calcium chloride in about uh, 75 uh, milliliters of water. So we're just going to add all of this in here. You see it? Right away. Okay. You notice? You see a milky white substance forming inside that orange liquid. That's the precipitate of calcium citrate. And uh, we're going to heat this up, bring it to a boil, and then uh, let it cool a little bit, and then we're going to filter it. Okay. So it just needs to boil, so I'm going to just set it at about 100 degrees. That's boiling point of water, assuming uh, we're in the ballpark of it. I don't think it would have changed much. So. I'm going to stir and also heat at the same time, allow the liquid to boil. And once it gets to boil, I'm going to keep it there for a couple of minutes and then cut off the heat and take it off the hot plate and allow it to cool. Okay. So let's summarize what we did in step two. In step two, we took the filtrate that came from the filtration process in step one that contained the sodium, uh, that contains the citric acid in the aqueous form. Um, along with a bunch of sodium ions. So now we added calcium chloride and uh, now we are precipitated, we just precipitated calcium citrate. Sodium citrate soluble whereas calcium citrate is not nearly as soluble. So we're going to heat this mixture up and bring it to a boil and then when the mixture boils I'm going to boil it for maybe a minute or two and then turn off the heat and then let it cool and then filter again get the precipitate and then that will be uh, that will take us to step three which is the final phase of making citric acid now once you finish step three uh, you won't actually have the citric acid crystal because you'll have a clear liquid and it takes at least a day for you to develop crystals so if you don't disturb put it in a clean uh, beaker or whatever you have and then come back the next day you'll have beautiful crystals and if your crystals looks dirty then you can always put it in uh, in um, some kind of solvent and then you can recrystallize it 
and if it's still pure recrystallize again now you don't need to do distillation at this point because you know that's why we're doing this lab is to avoid distillation or reflex or any of those tedious work so this is technically a one lab period work but uh, it may it may take a little longer but it depends on your work ethics so well that's that's it for step two we're gonna wait till this liquid comes to a boil and then we'll be back with the step three of the process uh, finally uh, the solution is done and you can see two clear layers one is the calcium citrate and then there's also the aqueous layer we're gonna first filter it so this is step three try your best not to disturb the mixture so that your your solution goes through the paper really really quick you really don't want to mix it and let it stand Alright, so I'm going to filter it and when the filter procedure is done, I'm going to get back to you with step 4. Well, do you want me to actually stand and show you the whole video? No. Okay. We're just going to filter, separate the liquid layer from the solid layer and then we're going to use the solid uh, further into our step 4 where we had concentrated sulfuric acid. It's not it's not the pure potential but we're going to dilute that concentrated sulfuric acid to a more lighter form and then we're going to use this the bottom portion well you can uh, keep it in a waste beaker and then we can be disposed of later all right all right i'll see you with step four all right we're moving on to the last step in the process so if you notice on part three, the liquid that the, the precipitate that was left on the bottom was yellow in color. So I separated it out through filtration. So the liquid came. Still, this was yellow in color. But I just, uh, when I added the sulfuric acid, it turned white. So you can see it. It's no longer yellow in color. It's um, basically how much you add depends on if there's traces of yellow color still stuck to your solution but to me I think it looks pretty good I'm just gonna add some more as always for good measure I am gonna put this back on the hot plate I don't need to use all of the sulfuric acid because I got it I just need just a little bit I'm gonna rotate it so you can see the setup here I'm gonna put it back on the on the heating plate here and then I'm gonna throw in a throw in a magnetic stir here and it goes so It's actually much safer to throw this down the sink, but um, I don't like to do that. I mean, we this is aqueous basically, so it's a simple aqueous waste that's not toxic, but you still don't want to throw away chemicals down the sink. So we have an aqueous waste that we've kept uh, in our general chemistry laboratory that's only meant for aqueous waste, and then we also maintain separate waste for various type of reactions we do here. So this is going to go in the aqueous waste which I'm gonna get rid of it. And then you can see that we're on step four. We added a diluted uh, concentrated sulfuric acid to our yellow precipitate that was on the bottom. The moment I added it, it turned white. Now, if any of you have actually seen citric acid in your in a pharmacy or grocery store, you can find them anywhere, just solid citric acid, they're cheap. We're doing this to understand the chemistry behind it but we're not gonna get it perfectly pure. But you know citric acid is white in color. So to have a yellow citric acid means that's not acceptable, but it, to me it looks like you can't get any whiter than that. So, so we're gonna boil it for a little bit and then let it stand. And then we're gonna take out the solution that comes out of it and then let it sit. I think we're gonna generate, uh, I might even stop here and then um, because it's really hot I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit and then 
filter it and get the aqueous layer and the precipitate would stay in the beaker or in the pa filter paper and we need the aqueous layer and then we're gonna just retain that aqueous layer in a clean 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 vessel I cannot emphasize the word clean and then leave it either open or cover it with the paraffin film and just go away for a couple of days when you come back you'll see beautiful citric acid crystals if you feel there's some impurity you can always recrystallize it and then recrystallize it recrystallize it until you see a really really clean looking citric acid but again that is something we can do I, I think I've, I've done a good job already so there's not going to be as much impurity in the sample it looks pretty clean to me there's no coloration of any kind it looks pretty good so that's uh, that's step four and once the, the mixture cools off I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna let it uh, separate out the two layers the aqueous and the precipitate layer and then the aqueous layer will be used to make citric acid crystal all you gotta do is just let it sit and then it will make crystals okay and then we can do the percentile once we actually get solid crystals out of the solution okay but that can be done today so I'm gonna stop the video here and when I actually have the crystal I'm gonna come back and show you the crystal eel show you the crystals and show you the percentile all this will be one big video but I'm gonna it's not gonna happen today it will be happening tomorrow or on Friday depending on of how long I want to wait till I get the last bit of crystal out of my sample so anyways the last video that I'm gonna be making in this citric acid synthesis cycle would be about would be about um, um, percent yield and just recapture everything we've done and then uh, the description of all the samples that we've used and their proportions is all will be in the description box or it will be in the handout for my students for those of you that are not going to be in my class well your video is your only source of getting this information to me I think citric acid cycles done and job done so I'll see you all on Friday and uh, hopefully we'll have citric acid crystals to show you. Okay, bye-bye.